Hey guys, hey. Guten Tag. How you guys doing? How you doing? Because it's Thursday, which means it's almost the weekend, and I got weekend hair. Weekend hair. I'm going to leave it like that. Yep. So I thought I would touch on a little bit of things that I talked about yesterday. Um, the hair. That's what happened when you <coughs> wash it before bedtime. Wash it before bedtime, yeah. So anyway, anyhow. Anywho. I, um, Job Corps was a really interesting experience. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my Job Corps was like. And I do not know what the rest of them are like. But when people are in, are getting too old for juvie, which means that when they do another offense, they're going to go to jail this time. So a lot of the times, in order to help clean up somebody's act, the judge will offer job court instead. You can go to jail or you can go to job court. Job court is from 18 to 24. Um, I was, I just hit 20. So I went because I had no place to stay. I had no place to go, I had no future, I had no prospects, I didn't have my GED, I didn't have a driver's license, I didn't have anything. So when they came at me and told me, you know, we'll get you into college afterwards, we'll get you your GED, we'll get you your driver's license, we'll get you all the things, you're gonna have a million friends, you're gonna, you know, the, we've got a pool, we've got, you know, a pool hall, we've got all these wonderful things and you'll learn a trade and you're just gonna be the happiest damn person on the planet. And I'm like, for somebody who really didn't have any good prospects and who was pretty much almost living on the street at that point, I was just like, well, hell yeah, sign my ass up, let's go. You know? Um, the video and stuff was really misleading. They also don't explain to you that you cannot go to job court in your own town because that means that you have an easier time running away or having somebody come pick you up to run away. So they would not allow me to be in North Carolina. Um, I did finally talk to them enough to where they put me in Tennessee. So I'm gonna try to explain this in the easiest way I can. Um, very Southern. I was very sheltered at the time. Um, I came from a little town of nowhere in North Carolina, North Kakalaki. Um, we did not have very diverse ethnicities at all, whatsoever. Everybody was this color, everybody. So it was a huge culture shock for me when I went into Job Corps because there were 750 <coughs> students, 20 staff, I believe, and um, there was like a 6% uh, Caucasian. So, and I made up like three of them. So like technically there'd be only like 3%. I was big girl. Um, so I hadn't been around any other culture in my entire life. Like I, all I knew is what I grew up with, which was, you know, Southern Baptist, you know, quote unquote, typical Southern and so, you know, I'd never really listened to rap before. I didn't know anything about weaves. I didn't know anything about, you know, <laughs> about any of these things. So all of this was new and exciting for me until I started getting, like, beaten up. <laughs> they didn't like me very much. Um, you know, I was, I was probably pushing 400 at that time. Um which means that I had to wait for them to order me special clothes because uh, everybody has to wear a uniform to work. Um, there were certain activities and things that I wasn't able to do because I was too big. Uh, I was also the biggest person there, obviously. Um, I was there for close, uh, damn near a year. And the first thing I signed up for was the optical, um, which would teach me how to read and make glasses. Uh, I did all that. I learned how to make glasses, yay. It was boring. I mean, it was just it was just boring. 
So then I switched to culinary, um, where you're pretty much just thrown into the cafeteria for a good, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, depending on, you know, um, your shift. And I would get up at like four o'clock in the morning and go down there to make breakfast. Because I think everybody came into breakfast around, I want to say like seven, seven-ish, six thirty-seven. That's feeding over 700 plus people. So, um, culinary started a whole lot of things for me. Um, obviously I like to eat. So that was, that was a, that was a pretty good deal at the time because I get to make it. Um, so I get to make my own food because we had cockroaches. Yep. Most, most places do we had cockroaches. Come on now. And, um, in order for me to make sure that my food didn't have uh, anybody living in it, uh, I preferred to make it myself. Everything came out of a big gigantic can. Um, the only fresh vegetables you had was like a salad per, per day, like you can have a salad uh, for lunch and dinner, but as far as any like other fresh vegetables, no. Everything was fried, fried to hell and back. Like everything was, you know, uh, biscuits, gravy, you know, all these things came in big packages, big packs of stuff. Um, you know, nothing, a cafeteria. I mean, if you're, if you're, cafeteria. So, and over 10 years ago. So, you know, I don't know what's changed. Hopefully they have revamped things. I don't know. Um, the nurses station, let's talk about that. Uh, for a while, uh, I was having so many panic attacks because people were hurting me and stealing my things and being God awful, awful to me <laughs> that I would uh, beg to stay in the nurse's station um, during the day. And so, you know, the, the issue with Job Corps is once you sign up, you can't leave. You can't leave until your, your I guess, tour is done. Um, you can get leave for the weekend. Like, you can have somebody come pick you up for the weekend, but you have to be back by sun, uh, Sunday night, so you can leave Friday evening and come back Sunday, I think, you know, before a certain time su uh, Sunday to check in. But depending on where you're at, because they won't let you stay in the same state, like, the likelihood of you getting off is, is zero. So, also, you're about an hour away uh, at least mine was in the in the hills of uh, Tennessee you're about an hour away from any kind of civilization because people run off like all the time they are you in an OFT um and for a good damn reason because that place was horrible <laughs> that was horrible I um I had a lot of issues Oh, there was a ridiculous amount of sex going on there because there's only there's one girl's dorm and like three guys dorms there's 750 students and probably I think less than 60 were girls I mean so there was a lot of sex and disease and, and people coming in and out all the time and you know fights and so here's 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 something that scared the shit out of me so um, primarily everybody was African American that, that was there and I lived we were in Tennessee the back hills of fucking Tennessee so one night we heard the KKK was going to come down and do, and do all kinds of crazy shit so you know everybody's on lockdown everybody's made to stay in their thing and we saw um, like from our windows and stuff like that like you know kids were getting locks and socks and like they were gonna you know, it was it was crazy it was crazy and I will never forget it there was um, like these big line of trucks coming down the big hill in front of the place where we're at and all these damn KKK members were like on it and you know the police were called and it was just it was ridiculous and like kids were fighting and you know just like they were gonna go out there and get shot and just it was it was, it was, just, it was. So, you know, um, people got sent away a lot. They would do shit like bring drugs into the place. Um, they would bring alcohol and then get kicked out. Um, 
you know, they'd get somebody pregnant. If you got pregnant, you get the boot. Um, you know, if you run off um, more than, I think, once or twice, you get the boot. So, the allure of the places that, you know, you get a trade, you get friends, you get college, you get to have all this wonderful stuff, your GED, your driver's license and stuff like that. Um, it was not a good experience for me. It was a really hard experience for me and an experience that till to today haunts me. Um, I'm not saying that the whole thing was awful. I did make a few friends. Um, I actually still have one that I still talk to that's on my Facebook, David. Um, and no two, Brie and Brie too. Um, you know, that we all kind of experienced it together. It's, it's a blur. It's a blur to me. And they weren't going to let me go. So I had finished my culinary thing. I had gotten the highest anybody had had for GED in a very, very long time. I'd gotten my driver's license. I'd, you know, I'd finished. That was my second um, occupation in less than a year. So I did not belong there. Uh, I knew I didn't belong there, and I wanted out. So they were not, they were not ready to let me, let me go. So they wanted to keep me because I was a good worker. You know, they wanted to keep me as long as they could because, you know, I, I did good shifts and I was able to, you know, pretty much be on my own in the kitchen and uh, supervise everybody else. So they didn't want to let me go. Uh, I ended up getting kicked out because I put hand sanitizer on a table and lit it on fire. Yep. Uh, did it burn the table? No, but that's a big no-no. And I knew it was a big no-no, and I wanted the fuck out of there. Uh, they were not going to send me to college. They were not going to send me to college at all. Um, so when we started talking about it and everything, and I was like, well, I'm ready to be transferred to go to the, the nurses, you know, thing, uh, they kept giving me the runaround. So they weren't going to do it. And they were not willing to let me out on my own. And so I had found a place to stay um, in Johnson City, Tennessee, from a, a, a boyfriend that I had there uh, who lived there for a while. And it was kind of like a little boarding house. And I lived there for three years after I left um, with my, my friend Steve Rue, which we nicknamed, his nickname is Hobbit. He's a very short, very short little man. Oh, very short. I don't know why I said it in that voice, but that's not the point. Um, so, I don't know what Job Corps is like anywhere else. Um, I do know that I had a horrific experience, um, but I'm also a girl. Uh, you know, maybe guys have a better time of it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, it was... I started cutting while I was there. Uh, that was... A release for me because you know um, drugs were expensive <laughs> uh, you know there were only certain people who had drugs it's 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 like prison it's just like prison you know everybody's thrown in together people from everywhere um, and lots of them were supposed to be in jail so you can imagine the kind of you know atmosphere you're told when to get up, when to shower, when to go to the bathroom. Um, you know, you pretty much have to be on death's door to get a day off uh, from your duty. I mean, like, you would legitimately need to be almost dead before they would allow you to, to stay in bed. And, and yeah, it's, it's that bad. So I'm hoping the two... Uh, my hair and... Come on. Out of here. My hair is everywhere. <coughs> I'm hoping that um, the two ladies that were asking about it, I hope this answers some questions. Um, I, haven't, I haven't received any messages, so I hope this kind of gives you a little insight of what it was like for me. But then again, it was a long time ago. Um, and I know not, not a whole hell of a lot of people talk about it, but I didn't have a good experience. So, I love your beautiful, gorgeous, amazing faces. I really do hope that everybody's having a good day. I know the weekend's almost here. Weekend hair. And I will talk to you very, 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 very soon. Mm -hmm.